Content marketing is a fantastic way to build your brand, but there are more ways to demonstrate your expertise than just posting to your social media. Being a guest on podcasts has really helped me to build credibility and my personal brand. For those of you who are burnt out on creating alone, this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to share some practical steps to help you get booked for more podcasts. Without further ado, let's hop in. Hi, my name is LaShonda Brown and welcome to Bootstrap Biz Advice, where I teach people how to grow a biz without breaking the bank. If you're interested in reviews or how to's, this channel is for you. I believe there is nothing wrong with being on a budget and my advice will help you level up without racking up debt. To get started, head over to my website and join the Bootstrap Club to start saving on your favorite tools and gain access to my free resource library. According to Buzzsprout, podcast listeners have increased almost 30% from 2018 to 2021. 104 million Americans listen to podcasts regularly and 80 million would consider themselves weekly podcast listeners. The most interesting stat that I've seen so far about the impact of the podcast industry is each week, more Americans listen to podcasts than have Netflix accounts. Now you may not have the bandwidth to host your own podcast, but there are over half a million active podcasts on Apple Podcasts alone. So instead of completely ruling out podcasts as a valid way to grow your brand awareness and reach a new audience, let's chat about what it takes to get noticed as a podcast guest. I am a firm believer of leveraging your current network to expand. Who are you currently connected with that has a podcast? Within the last five years, so many online entrepreneurs have ventured into podcasting. If you start your outreach efforts with people you already have a personal connection with, you'll have a much stronger start with this strategy. Now, I'll be honest, I tested out having someone pitch me as a podcast guest in the early days, and the conversion rate was so much lower than when I pitched myself. If you're getting started with this strategy, I would not outsource it immediately. Do it on your own, take notes, and constantly evaluate your approach. Most podcast hosts will ask you to introduce yourself at the beginning or at least submit one in advance that they can pre-record. One of the lessons I learned was that you want to have a consistent elevator pitch so that the impact of your interviews begins to snowball. If you're a multi-passionate entrepreneur, hear me out on this one. You may have many passions, but you have to narrow down your pitch to perform well with audio. If your intro is powerful and compelling, people will seek you out after they listen to your episode. But if it's unclear what your subject matter expertise is, people will consume the content, and then move on to the next thing. It's just like a house. You need to entice someone to come through the front door and once they're inside, you can show them as much as you like. But if you lack curb appeal, they won't step foot inside. Your elevator pitch is not just something that will come into play once you book your first interview. It should be consistent with your social profiles and your website. Ultimately, Podcasts will help you establish yourself as a subject matter expert and should be used to showcase your expertise. Some interviews will be more laid back and fun, but the majority of business-minded podcasts want you to provide some type of outcome to their listeners. If the hosts can attract experts who are willing to be generous with their expertise, people keep coming back, their downloads increased, and awareness for their show will grow and grow and grow. Everyone benefits from your investment in clarity, so be willing to take the time to firm that up. This may sound silly to you, but it took me years to start thinking about speaking on podcasts as a way to get booked for more speaking engagements. 
What better way to show people that you would be an amazing addition to their conference or their summit than a 30 to 60 minute conversation about your zone of genius? Do you treat these interviews like an audition for your next big gig or just some other Zoom call on your calendar? I make sure that I drink tea, find a quiet place to record and center myself before recording because you never know who may listen to that episode. It's getting increasingly difficult to get footage of speakers on stage at live events. Podcast episodes are an amazing way for you to demonstrate your speaking skills from the comfort of your home and help you not just get booked for more podcasts, but more speaking engagements in general. If there's one thing I've learned over the past 10 years as an entrepreneur is work begets more work. When people know that you are booked and busy, they keep you booked and busy. But if you're doing the work and never showing it, it gets harder to keep your pipeline full. The same goes for podcasting. If you want to continue to be asked to be a guest, you need to help the host market their show. It's mutually beneficial to you to have more listeners on your episode. So here are some practical steps that you can take after you've booked your interview. Create an Instagram story the day you record your episode. You don't have to wait until the episode is out to start talking about this opportunity. Tag the podcast host and their podcast account if they have one on Instagram stories and link to the show with an Instagram story link sticker. This way, when the episode comes out, your audience is already subscribed and it begins the process of helping the host reach more people. Share the graphics they provide when it's live. I know this may seem like a no brainer, but so many people fail to do this when their episode drops. Podcast hosts spend a lot of time and money creating these assets. So make sure that you leverage them. One thing I will say is you want to have a variety of headshots to choose from. So the episodes don't all start looking the same the more you do. Don't forget to talk to your audience and add a little context before you share the graphic for them to go listen to increase your clicks. Create a speaking page on your website. After I complete an interview, I go to the speaking page on my website and I add the name of the podcast to the list of podcasts I've appeared on. Not only is this a great way to have a running list on where you've been featured, but it's also a great way to market the show as well. I'm a sucker for a good landing page. What you're going to realize is as you get booked for more and more podcasts is that some of the admin questions remain the same. They'll ask you for your headshot, bio, links to social profiles, freebies you'd like to market and topics you'd like to cover. If you create a page on your website that contains all of this information, when you get booked, you can send them the link and it simplifies the process for them. If you help your podcast hosts be successful, they're way more likely to refer you to other hosts in their network. You can also find opportunities to be interviewed within Facebook communities. So do a few searches for groups that relate to your target market and engage there when you have the time if you'd like to seek out additional opportunities. Podcasting and live streaming have been my top two tools for improving my speaking skills. You don't have to have a large following to be a great guest. You just need to have a passion for a specific topic and a desire to serve. Before you go, let me know in the comments what's your favorite podcast to listen to. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, to ta for now. Real quick before you go, I'd like to invite you to join my community, the Bootstrap Club, for free. You'll get access to my resource library, which includes stock photos, Canva templates, cheat sheets, checklists, and my 16-page YouTube passive income guide. Just go to lashondabrown.com slash join the club.